exactly the same posture, same colors, um, but the expression. I paint the people I love and I respect, but like when I'm working, I have this whole thing of empathy and um, connection. Uh, and I think about them a lot over and over again when I paint them. Then I don't know how you feel when you watch your paintings, when you look at them. Maybe you, 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 you think they're characters and you feel like you need to you know, study them or something. But what I think you should focus on is their identity and how they want to be represented. This is like what it's about, I feel, is how do you want to be represented? In the Western, like art history, uh, portraits or like a specific genre that is dedicated only to the people of power, like wealthy, command, uh, like patrons. Um, I do something a bit different because uh, I paint uh, well the people I know that are from a very specific environment uh, or that have that I can identify with. They have a personal fight, they are activists, they are, have strong personalities, strong stories, but they're not people of you know, wealth and this kind of power. It's a different type of power. And I think to represent them is very important because they should be, they should be an imagery of, of, of these people that make our world. She paints her friends, her family, uh, her like, close uh, creative artistic colleagues, and she's very uh, attentive to uh, the whole situation around portraiture, about um, representation and the power play that uh, unfolds uh, when an artist um, uh, renders another person, basically. Um, and so she has a very sort of careful and thoughtful approach uh, because she wants to, um, rather than, you know, be the powerful artist, she wants to empower her models and to, um, to show how she identifies with these people that she often knows like you know very intimately I just like put myself in this whole conversation with all the other artists dead and alive. But um, yeah, I decided to paint. It's not BLM as in the US, but of course it's the same thing. It's, it's about like the structural racism in France uh, connected to the killing of Adama Traoré.
that glass ceiling, how is it now? Um, right now, it feels like it's very high, uh, but I mean, like, um, I'm sure it's still there. <laughs> so we must fight. He started making these as minimalist sculptures and slowly he sort of began putting ornamentation into them. He began referencing architecture and slowly over the time they actually became more and more minimalist. And they have usually been placed in, in, in a square or somewhere where they either solved a problem that this square, that this public space had. Um, maybe they obstructed access in one way or another. Sort of like trying to poke a little bit at the viewer. Sort of like trying to get the viewer maybe a little bit more interested in making the, in, the, making the viewer aware of where they are in their, in, in their city and in the world. That's probably one of the first exhibitions that we've ever done where nothing can break and where you're actually allowed to touch the sculptures, you're allowed to walk onto the sculptures. So um, hopefully the audience will also get a lot of fun out of that.